Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. We are going to do part three of our installing our fireplace and TV above and today we're going to kind of be finishing the project. It has been a little longer of a project for us kind of in between but here we have a rainy day so we're going to get her done. We're going to start out today by hanging the TV and we're actually going to do something really cool that Sam thought of, which is put the cords through the wall so you don't see them kind of going behind the fireplace, which is going to be really neat. And we are also going to be installing the blower on our fireplace and then fixing the molding so it doesn't, you know, poke out a little bit. It'll be flush against the wall. So let's get started. You gonna be sad that the plywood's gone? No. You sure? Yeah. I mean, we could hang this up on the wall. <laughs> now we can do it like this and it can be our mantle. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Expensive mantle. So as we pull out the fireplace, we're gonna have to mark on the back of the fireplace a little notch where the pipe comes out of the floor. That way it can be pushed all the way because that's what's also holding it off of the wall right now. So. Let's mark it and then we can use our oscillating tool and cut it out. Welcome. So I'm going to measure how far off the edge. That way I can do this and see that it's going to be about right here to the far side, which is about nine and a quarter. Ah, I hate these things. Cool. Now we can vacuum up the excess and it should slide right to the wall. Your turn. I didn't do that. That wasn't me. Seriously? That wasn't me. Now that we have the quarter round molding cut and the notch cut on the back of the fireplace, we're gonna push this back against the wall and trace the profile of the fireplace against our baseboard molding. Then we'll cut that out and that'll allow us to push it all the way flush to the wall. Whenever I drilled the hole through the floor for the gas pipe to be run through, I happened to hit the floor joist. Odds are you're always going to have that happen. So as you can see, or you did see, we have a huge hole. 
and that's the reason. So I'm going to use some of this expanding spray foam to fill up the hole, make sure it stays nice and tight, and just kind of bury my mistake. Although I didn't do it intentionally, but yeah, it was me. Katie's kidding. Mm -hmm. This is a pipe that goes straight through the basement, so I'm going to put some foam in this too. Alright, what we have here is really specific to our fireplace. This is the blower unit that you can buy for it, and we're going to work on putting this in next. I don't think we'll cover this in very much detail because it is really specific. But to show you really quickly what a blower is, is it is a squirrel cage style fan that just rotates, pulls air from the back, across through the top and out the front, and helps disperse your heat better throughout your room. We really don't need this. We have used the fireplace for a couple of weeks now and it heats very well. It does not keep the heat localized with our ceiling fan as well. We can move the heat throughout the house, but we already bought this, so we figure let's go ahead and install it. Maybe we'll end up needing it or really liking it, but either way, we spent the money, we might as well put it to good use. We've been looking at the instructions and installation is pretty basic, so we'll go ahead and get that knocked out and then show you guys whenever that's done. Although, you won't see much other than this on the back of the fireplace. It is very quiet. It is on. That's great because some people have said that their blower is super loud. Yay! No, I can barely hear it. Fireplace is totally done, but before we push it back against the wall, we need to actually install this cord management, cable management thing that Angela's holding. We're going to be cutting holes in our drywall to give us ports, which are these little white things here, to run cables from down below where the power outlet is, in the wall, and then out where the TV will be mounted so that we don't have any wires visible when everything's said and done. Now we knew he was going to do this whenever we did the drywall and framing the wall up and everything, so he made sure there was a little route for it to go. Right. Wow, that seems like so long ago. It really does. In a way, it kind of was, but... Another time. All right, let's cut some holes in the wall. I was looking on the back of this, trying to, you know, see, get some ideas, read some instructions, and it actually includes the hole saw that you use to drill for your grommets to go on the wall. That is too cool, because this is not a very expensive kit. Sam's kind of cheap on this stuff, but it comes with a tool. Very cool. And it includes a little wire box, wow. Maybe this is not as cheap as I thought it would have been when I bought it. 120 bucks? Okay. Pretty sure. It comes with your fish tape wire too. Okay. So these come with the coolest little old work outlets. You want to take out the foam. That way you have this open. I'm going to put this in the wall and then tighten these screws which will make these little flaps fling over and pull up against the drywall. I, um, I'm, I'm geeking out over these. They're like the coolest, cutest little things I've ever seen. So, yeah, I'm geeking out. <laughs> Angel's laughing at me. All right, we're going to bring you guys into our dining room and the back side of the wall. We have not closed it up. We've got some things planned and projects around that you're going to kind of get a sneak peek of. But I'm going to fish the power cord, our outlet strip, down through the hole, and then we'll try and pull it out from the box this way. All right, this is the back side of the living room wall. This is the area that we closed up. You can see all the bracing and different things I added in because I knew we would probably mount the TV. I also cut a notch right here and drilled a hole through this part of the top wall that used to be there to route the power cord. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just fish it down through this part and hopefully out the little box down there. We had to take the box out so one of us could put our hands, me, into the wall to catch the cord coming out. So it worked better that way. So we're done with the fireplace. We're done with everything behind it. So we're ready to go ahead and slide it back in place and leave it there presumably forever and then we can focus on the TV mount next. So we run into a little bonus challenge. The blower cord, when plugged into the wall, sticks out too far that actually hits the back of the firebox. And it's not letting us put the fireplace flush against the wall like we want. Thankfully though, we had something that I had bought um, I found these a couple of weeks back and I've really enjoyed putting them throughout the house. It's something that's called a sleek socket. It is an extension cord, but it is a heavy duty. It's ready for 13 amps. It has this part that plugs into the wall, goes flush against the wall, and then it has a three outlet drop cord attached to the other end. So this is gonna be perfect for us. We're able to put this into the wall and then we can plug the TV power and the fireplace blower into this and not worry about exceeding the capacities. 13 amps is a lot of power and will work great for us. It allows us to put the fireplace flush against the wall like we want and still plug everything up and have it properly grounded with an appropriate extension. So here we go. I've put about four of these I think in our house. Like behind the couches they're really useful and in the boys room where there's an outlet close to their bed and we can't really use it otherwise these have worked great.
Okay. Alright, up or down? I can't see the wall. Oh. Alright, down. Well, that took entirely too long. Hey, I'm glad that we no longer have the piece of plywood sitting on top of our nice fireplace. You had to get rid of the custom wood mantelpiece, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah, no mantle. Well, I guess we have a mini mantle. Yeah. Well, plywood's going back to the workshop now. <laughs> yes. All we have left is to paint our fireplace. Like we originally said, we're going to paint it white. Not. Nope. <laughs> the darker color is growing on us. It has, it has a very nice contrast against the walls and the white uh, molding and the nice light colored flooring that we just want to leave it. Yeah, that and I kind of feel like if I was to try and paint it, I would probably ruin it. I don't want to risk it, so we'll say we just, you know, looks great. We're leaving it. Yeah, which it does, it does, it really looks good. It's nice to have it here, it makes the living room feel good. And how many times would you say we've used it so far? In the two three weeks we've had it installed i think i've used it probably once a day since we've gotten it it's very nice to be able to come in the mornings when it's really kind of crisp cold and i turn it on and it warms up and it just gives you all the warm cozies it is pretty nice <laughs> i like the fact that it's also an off-grid heat source so if the power does go out we at least have heating for the house and that's something that's good because you never know when the power may go out Another blizzard may blow through East Tennessee. <laughs> right. Or in the case when power has gone out, it was just one car hit a pole. That happens to you. Yeah. Either way, we're ready from a heating standpoint. Well, thanks guys for coming along as we finished up our fireplace project. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> you talk, I don't know what we're saying. Okay. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> say what happened, what did we do? <laughs> I've put about four of these, I think, in our house. Um, behind the... I got that out. We're gonna dirty it up anyway. Ta-da! It's clean. Ish. Alright, what are we doing? Find a motivation. <laughs>